this knows no end. It knows no limits. Thank you, Lord God, that there's no um, no limits to your goodness. And thank you, Lord God, that it follows and it comes after us. It's all around us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, as we go full throttle with you, Lord God, that, that your mercy never ends, your goodness uh, never goes away. And Father God, we thank you that your love is always around us. And we give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we close out in worship today, I'd like Tristan to come on up front real quick. Uh, Tristan has been, been here uh, since we've been here. He's been here longer than us. And, and Tristan goes away to college uh, this week. And uh, he's uh, he choked up a little bit. He's, uh, he's, uh, he likes the wrong sports teams, but that's okay. Uh, he's faithful to his, and that's what matters. So let's just pray. You stretch your hands out. Father God, we thank you for Tristan. We thank you for the gifts and the abilities. We thank you for the calling that is upon his life. Thank you, Lord God, as he takes this next step, as he turns this page and starts a new chapter in his life. Father God, that you will surround him with your goodness. You'll surround him with your love. And Father God, where he goes, he will make an impact on people. Lord God, that when he goes to study, so he'll, he'll learn, he'll get good grades, and he'll hurt people. I mean, he'll do great on the football team, and he'll do great there. Father, we give you a ask you to give him the strength, give him the courage, give him the wisdom. Uh, to love things that you love, to hate things that you hate, to go and be a blessing on that college campus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, give a round of applause as he takes a seat. Thank you. Thank God for what he's going to do in his life. And so um, there's a really there's a really good group of people I want to connect you with this week on Facebook uh, up there. Uh, they're Iwegians. Uh, but Which are they're, the best. they're from Missouri, and so uh, so they're double trouble. We got a video uh, from our missionaries in France, Brian and Kara Sally. We want to show you, give you an update on what they've been doing.
we started our internship program this past year. That's been a tremendous blessing to us, and we have interns coming again this fall, pray right, for uh, them to be able to travel here. We're trusting that they will be. Uh, we've also seen people even call to come help and serve alongside us right in the middle of this, uh, begin translating for us online and serving in different capacities. So God is still moving and calling people right in the middle of all of this. I think even more so right now. Amen. You know, uh, we can pray for us financially as well. We sit there in BFA last year, so for 2019 and 20, uh, praise God, all of the money came in to pay for Woo! last year's school year. Yes. Um, but now we're starting to work on 2021. Yeah. Uh, and so we just ask you to agree with us uh, about that. You know, with, with between his tuition and also schooling for us as well for French uh, French language schooling and other expenses, uh, you know, we need to raise an additional about two thousand dollars per month. You know, we give God glory that everything yeah, came in for his tuition. And, and even during this time, we had some extra come in. We were able to get the, some tires on one of our vehicles. We still got some vehicle repairs and other things that need to be done uh, uh, along that line. But uh, all in all, like I said, it's about another two thousand a month. So first off, pray and agree with us that that, that, the, that remaining amount comes in, that we can see that coming in monthly. Uh, you can uh, consider maybe partnering with us financially if you're not already, or if you are partnering with us financially, consider maybe increasing your uh, your, your level of support uh, for this year. All in all, we know that God is our source, that He is bringing, yes. uh, he is bringing it in, and we give Him praise and glory for it. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we continue to, to hold fast to the phrase that God gave us when we first arrived in France, yes. which was, which means difficult but not impossible. Yeah. And so we trust that God's doing the impossible right here in Duvain and in this region and right there where you're at yeah. as well. And we just thank you, our, our, our partners right now. We continue to give you a great big Merci beaucoup. There's one thing that I don't ever understand that's the French language. Insane to do that. Eric's passing out some papers um, while we do that. So Brian and Kara, um, our church supports them monthly, and they um, are living in Duvain, France. And um, talking with our missionaries recently, Brian and Kara weren't allowed out of their house for what six weeks, eight weeks, eight weeks. Like one person from their family could go out of the house for like two hours a day. Um, I was talking with Paul Delita down in Lima, Peru, and they, a couple days ago, a week, a week so ago, within the last two weeks, they took, they took their kids out of the house for the first time in 108 days. I would be like, eight hours to get out of the house. Like, I mean, like, you know, through this whole COVID-19, this whole shutdown, um, America shut down, but we weren't as shut down as other countries were. And Miles, it's not appropriate. And matter of fact, um, Brian and Kara, Becky was talking with Kara, and um, to go outside, you have to have a mask on, but it has to be a mask you get from the government. And so, um, you know, we, we, we still have our freedoms, we still have that. We might not like what's going on, but we can see it, it, it could be a lot more uncomfortable. And so, uh, if anything, begin to pray, continue to pray uh, for them. Um, as they are in trying to start a church and get that going, and then they're told they can't meet in person. And so if they just moved their whole entire family over, it seems like now they're just camping up. So um, through things like the internet, Zoom, and stuff like that, they're able to do it. So continue to pray for them. If God leaves it on your hearts and to uh, support them financially, um, we can help you with that. We can support you in the direction uh, of websites and things of that nature. So let's pray and we'll jump into part three. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for just a great time. Lord God, I thank you that, that your generosity knows no bounds and knows no limits. Your goodness uh, has no end. And I thank you for that. And we give you all the praise and the glory, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So what we've got here is on the paper that we handed out, we've got a couple of the scriptures that I'll reference. And so instead of putting it on eight different slides, I said, hey, let's just print it out and we can read it over at home. But uh, part three of Full Throttle is the generosity of God. And I was just thinking about this this time and this message. And, and our church is very generous. We have very generous people. And so this is just going to be kind of like a recap of everything that, that, that well, or not everything, but a lot of what God says about being generous. Um, and we'll, we'll have a checklist to go, oh, I do that. Oh, I'm like that. Oh, I'm like that. That's awesome. That's great. And, and so uh, that, this is kind of a thing that, that I noticed. But in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, it'll be on the screen there. 
Uh, it says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us. That's God talking about Jesus. And it says, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Now, a little time out on this, a little thing is when I read this when I was younger, I thought this, man, I, I'll have a four-wheeler. I'll have a really nice car. You know, I'll be able to have all this. And, and I got it kind of misconstrued. And what it really means is we'll never lack. We should never lack. God, who gave Jesus his son to, to go on the cross for our sins, if, if God did that for Jesus, then he'll make sure we don't ever lack in things that we need. And then in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 and 19, this is in the message translation. And I'm using a lot of message translation today because it really speaks to us. In verse 17 of 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says, I tell you, tell those rich in this world's wealth to quit being so full of themselves and so obsessed with money, which is here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, tell them to go after God who piles in all the riches we could ever manage to do good, to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous. If they do that, they'll build a treasury that will last, gaining life that is truly life. Now, this is not saying if you've got a lot of money in the bank that you're blue, boo, he's not saying that. He's saying that when we do things, we should have a heart that is affecting people eternally. That there's a treasure in heaven for us, that that when we help out somebody, when no one else sees it, that God sees that and he'll honor that. And so it's not saying that you can't have, have wealth. It's saying don't let wealth have you. It's saying don't, don't do that. Now, why are we talking about this? Well, because generosity goes against human nature, right? I, I grew up an only child. I have no cousins. Uh, I have no nieces or nephews on my side of the family. It is just me on my side of the family. And so we're, we're selfish by nature. And I can tell you that because one time, one of my kids, I'm not going to mention which one, they were at daycare. And I went to pick the, that one up. And I'm trying not to, to say who it was. Uh, we'll let you figure it out. And uh, the, the daycare person says, um, your child hit someone in the head with a train. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And here, the, the, the victim that got hit in the head took the train from my child, and my child was mine, right upside the head. That's how you train it. That's how you train, train up a child the way you go, right? So we know that, that if you ever try to take a popsicle or candy from a young one, they're going to let you know that that's not okay, that that's theirs. And if we could quote a line from Finding Nemo, mine, 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 mine. mine. If you don't know what that is, just look for the seagulls for finding Nemo. <laughs> so, let's get to third gear and we'll go full throttle uh, in full generosity for God. On your pages, you have Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, starts at verse 27. It says, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. That's hard. That's hard. And I'm going to just jokingly around, we, we uh, you know, if you... If, if, if my favorite sports team is in your favorite sports team, I mean, if you're wearing those ugly colors, I'll let you know. But I still love them. All right? You know, our, our, our favorite sport teams aren't the best friends with each other. Okay, I'll still love you. But to love your enemies, to love someone that doesn't like you, that's tough. To love someone that that's, doesn't respond when you say, hey, hi, hi, how you doing today? And they just walk by. Oh, you're doing that well. Great. You know, you're speechless. Awesome. You know, um, it says love your enemies. This is what hurt. This, this is where generosity hits. Love your enemies. Also, do good to those who hate you. Do you hate me? Oh, I'm going to do good to you. No, I mean, it's like you can tell if someone doesn't like you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, turn it to the other side also. Thank you, sir. Can I have another? You know, like, uh, you know, this is just, this, this goes beyond human nature, but it's proven a point. If someone takes your coat, do not hold your shirt from them. Uh, someone steals my coat. Hey, wait, you forgot something. And you're taking your shirt off. Go take this too. I mean, it's crazy. Give to everyone who asks you. If anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I mean, this is one of those you just rub your eyes and you're like, 
I read that wrong. This is obviously in a foreign language. And, and you read it, you're like, whoa. That's crazy. But it's but it's true, it's, it's, it's what God's called us to do. It goes on in verse 32. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? It's easy for me to love my wife, she loves me back. You know, that's easy that's easy. My kids have to love me, so it's no, easy. Right? You know, but those it says, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those, if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that? Even people or sinners or people who don't know Christ do that. If you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full or people who don't know Jesus. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get any back. Then your reward will be great. And your children of the Most High, because it's, it's kind and ungrateful to the wicked, be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. See, this is just, if it's Jesus telling us to do things that are against the grain, that are against what we normally think. If I lend somebody some, something, and I don't expect to get it back, and they never get it back to me, but sometimes it's like, hey, I need that back. Do we just go buy another one? We have an endless supply of, of something that we just keep lending out. I, I, I really, we really have to just hit, hit into this and see what this is saying is, is you know, we, we had um, years ago, we needed some money. And so we asked somebody and, they, and they, they later told us that they lent it to us, not expecting to get paid back. And I'm like, what are you trying to say? And they're like, no, 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 we're not saying it that way. But if you, we wouldn't have said anything to you if you never paid it back. And I was like, wow. Can you imagine, you know, just not expect, I mean, that just goes against the grain. To me, it was, I had a hard time, I still have a hard time comprehending that. It goes on in verse 37, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with good measure you use, it will be measured to you. Verse 38, the message translation says, give your life away and you'll find life given back. But not merely given back. Given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way generosity leads to generosity. And I, you know, a lot of times, if we go back into verse 37, or verse 38, we read that give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. That's a good scripture. But if we go back one scripture, it says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. I, you know, if they scratched out verse 38, it's all one thought. It's all one thing. Whatever measure you use in not judging people, whatever measure you use in, in not condemning people or condemning people, see, it all, all goes in together. And a lot of times we, our culture has said that, don't judge me, you know, we, We'll say that at home because we do something stupid and or do something that's like, did you really just say that? And if they'll judge me, you know, it's like, well, your words, you know, what about your tape? They did judge you. But, you know, if, if someone's going through something or someone does something or someone is a certain way, you're not supposed to put judgment on them because that's what God says. Don't do that. Generosity begets generosity. And generosity is a lifestyle, not a moment. All right, that's our first point today. Generosity is a lifestyle. You live a life of generosity, it's a lifestyle. I, I'm not gonna say to myself, I'm just going to try a diet. Now, my wife might present to me a non-meat diet, and I might say, I'll try it for one meal, right? And, you know, we have uh, people we know that they went, they just went cold turkey vegan or vegetarian. Like, like no meats, like they, they excommunicated the meat from their house, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna try that. You know, I'm not gonna try vegetarian. I'll try meatitarian, but I won't try vegetarian or carnivore, right? Carnivore. I'm not gonna be a herbivore. And so you can't just try a diet. If I'm just gonna try a diet, I have to go all in. I change my lifestyle. I change what I'm doing. I change how I act and what I think and what I do because I have a goal in mind. Uh, if I have a goal to be the most generous person around, then that changes my mindset. If I have a goal to be the nicest person around, if I have a goal to be to live more healthy and to to watch my calorie intake, so therefore my 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 uh, my my health goes up, that's a lifestyle. 
Um, it's a lifestyle change. Generosity is a lifestyle change. True purpose of life will only be found once we look beyond ourselves. We see that in, in the Bible a lot. When someone does something for somebody else, then they're like, oh man, this is satisfying. This is amazing. This is awesome. Because even though our nature is to be selfish, when we come to Christ, our new nature is to be generous. And we're, 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 um, we're not fed, but we're satisfied in that way. I remember one time um, I was selling something somewhere, and, and this guy liked uh, a certain, I don't know if it was Star Wars or whatever, and I had something sitting in the shelf. It was just taking up space. So I messaged him, hey, do you want this to He's like, no, nah, I don't have the money for it. And I'm like, okay. So I just put it in the car anyway. It was a cardboard cut out of C-3PO. I think I had him in the passenger seat with me. We were going on the carpool lane or something. And um, made the transaction and stuff. And I was like, hey, did you want that? And he's like, oh, yeah, I just want the money. I was like, here, take it. And, and the guy's like, what, really? And I'm like, yeah. Now, when I left, I wasn't like, oh, poor me. I don't have that anymore. No, I was excited because this guy, um, well, he was happy. So my generosity made somebody happy, and therefore that satisfied something in here. And, and it's a lifestyle, uh, not a moment of generosity. But generosity, number two, if you're taking notes, generosity is ignited by love. First John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. I don't remember if it's up there or not, but it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And, and I wrote this down. You can give and not love, but it's impossible to love to, to love and not give. I can give and not love. Here, take it. I don't want anything. But it's impossible for me to, to love and not give. Oh, you, you need that here. Oh, I'll help you out with that. Or here, take that. Or, or do this. Uh, we went on a mission trip one time, and I had this. We were only allowed to have a certain size bag and a certain pounds and um, we had to wear jeans every day uh, in Mexico in the summer in the valley it was hot and um, I remember I brought back less clothes not because they were nasty but because you know I had a shirt or something and something like it so I just gave it to the person I'm like here you want to have it it's fine and so uh, you know when we see a need, when we, we have love for people, it's just natural to give. It's just natural to, to do that. And so um, on our papers, we'll flip it over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And this is mostly out of the message. Uh, but it's just reminding us of how generosity is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 15, it's on, it's on our papers here. The first part's the message. It says, listen, remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make your own mind about what you give, or in other words, what you plant. That will protect you against soft stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Now, verse this is verse 6 through 8 of the NIV, so that was the message. This is the same thing we just read, only different in the NIV. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each one of you should have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, uh, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. And so that that is simply saying this, like, my wife and I, we, we talk about it, and we decide how much we're going to give. You know, God says to bring our tithes to the storehouse, so we've decided that. But then also if there's a need or like our missionaries we talk about, we've decided on what we should give. And then therefore, if we hear something or something's going on, then then you're not guilt tripped into giving more. It's kind of what it says, you're arm twisted. You don't feel like you're bad if you don't give more. The devil's not, you're not giving the devil room for going, well, you should have given more to that person. Now they're going to starve, you know, because you didn't give more. And so you're already decided what you should give. You felt it right in your heart. You, you, you feel peace about it. And it says God loves a cheerful giver. This is not just about money. Giving and generosity is not about money. Matter of fact, I'll say that money is down on the list. It's about time. It's about 
thoughts. It's about kind words. It's about good deeds. It's about acts of kindness. You know, Dave will probably say something to me later about it, but the other day I, I couldn't get a lawnmower to start. I was on the phone with him and he told me what to do and I, I got the whole, I, as I, I've even had you with me, I took it apart and I put it back together and didn't have extra parts. <laughs> You've been proud of me. But I was like, Dave, I tried, I, 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 I don't know what it is. So he's like, bring it over. So I, I was like, he's like, right now it's fine. He, he didn't give me a dime, I didn't give him a dime, he didn't ask for a dime, wasn't, money wasn't involved. He just said, hey, do this, do this, do this. He was generous with his knowledge. And within five minutes, we talked longer than we worked on the thing. We had it started. And this is not talking, it's not talking about just finance. And I want to get that straight. It's talking about knowledge, generosity, that type of thing. I mean, yeah, Dave had 10 or 20 minutes of hanging out with me. That's worth more than, I mean, that's just, that's just the beginning, you know, but, but no, because now I can, I can, I can do more harm if I try it myself, but you know, I, I, it, it's just that it's this, if you're a stingy planter, when it comes to your generosity, when it comes to your knowledge, helping somebody out, wisdom, uh, being kind deeds, you're, you're, you're going to, if you're never in a time of need, someone's not going to, you know, I mean, you're not going to reap that. It's not all about money. Does that make sense? Verse 8 in the message translation of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, on your pages here, says, God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done. As one psalmist says, he throws caution to the winds, giving to the needy in reckless abandon. His right living, right giving ways never run out, never wear out. This is God, right? He is God and what he's talking about. The most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. Let's stop right there. That says God is giving the seed to the farmer. He's giving the wheat seed to the farmer in preparation for it to be bread for you. So he's, get, he's blessing somebody else so down the road they can be a blessing to you. Does that make sense? He's being a blessing to you, so you can be a blessing to somebody else that does be a blessing to somebody else. You might get to heaven. Literally, you might get to heaven. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> get to heaven, and someone goes up behind you. Hey, Dave. And you're like, yes. No. He's like, thanks for helping Ryan out with that mower. Because you helped him, he helped me. Oh, I don't even know you. Yeah, you don't know me, but because you helped him, he helped me. Think about it. it. It's really, really, really cool. Something that may be simple and easy, and you could do upside down, blindfolded in a dark room, help somebody else out that helps somebody else out. It's really, really, really cool. It goes on, it says, he gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives. It's robust to God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. We'll just stop there. You can read the rest later. But that's what generosity does. We don't, when we're being nice, when we're being, uh, when we say kind words, we don't know what those kind words are doing to the brokenhearted person behind us. Especially right now. Hey, have a great day. You're, you're checking out. Hey, why don't you have a great day? That might be the only, hey, have a great day that they've heard all day. Because everyone's like, oh, this, and everyone's on edge, and this, and that, and that. Hey, have a great day. Hey, is there anything you need? What? No one's asked me that before. That's what generosity does. You see yourself as a river, not a reservoir. We all go to the great example of the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea, things flow into it, but nothing flows out. Right? In our lives, when, when we have intake of things and nothing goes out, it's a bad thing. Right? little bloating going on. Now I'll get back to that in a second. I'm not trying to be gross. But stinginess believes if I keep it, I'll have more. Generosity believes if I give it away, I'll have more, not less. Don't be plugged up with your things. 
Let things flow through you. Let things move through you. Know, let, let, let God move through you. Remember, we're, we're just the pipe or the conduit that God uses to get him from one place to another. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with money. It's kind words. It's good deeds. It's being nice. It's being available. It's those types of things. You see, generosity is released by faith and demonstrated through our faithfulness. These are not on the screen, but the Bible says, do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do what it says. In the same way, faith by itself, is, if it's not accompanied by action, is, is dead. Or, we've read it before, faith without works is dead. You see, I could be believing to, to, to be a blessing. God, thank you for, for me being a blessing. I want to be a blessing to somebody. And you feel that you should do something nice? You don't do it. God, I want to be a blessing to somebody. Bring somebody by that I can be a blessing for. And I walk someone right by. We got to put action to it. Everyone talks about the blessings of God, of walking the blessings of God, of pursuing them and wanting them. But there's a correlation between generosity and faith. It takes faith to forgive and love somebody. No one talks bad about your mom. God wants us to forgive them. It takes faith to do that because it goes against our natural grain. It takes faith to give time or money when you have needs in your life. It takes faith to, to bring your tithes to church when you have a good amount of bills. It takes faith to pray for somebody when your own prayers have gone unanswered. See, generosity begets or produces generosity. I know that if I'm if I'm nice to somebody, people are going to be nice to me back. Is that why I'm nice all the time? No. It's why I make myself be nice to people. Everybody, anybody ever have to make yourself do something that's like totally against your brain? Smile. I don't want to smile. I want to look mean and tough. Get street cred that way. I don't smile. Now you can just put a mask on. And no one knows. What you're doing. You can be walking around with your tongue sticking out there, everybody. And no one knows. But it's going against the grain of what we naturally want to do. You have to believe and act that all you have is not all you have. Example, I am never concerned about running out of love for my family. Now, there's times when, you know, just go to bed. <laughs> just put me in the room. But I'm never going to not love them. I'm ne you know, I'm never concerned about running out of love for my family. I'm not concerned about running out of love for the church family. I'm not concerned about running out of love for, for people. I'm not concerned with running out of kindness. Never fear running out of kindness. You know, if, if uh, someone's on the side of the road and, and they're broken down, I, I always kind of look to see if they're okay. And that's being kind. One time I pulled up on a car and there was a husband and wife or a guy and a girl and she was lower in the car on top of it. I was just Go away, you're ruining everything. But I'm never going to run out of things. I'm never worried about running out. I can, we can give kindness away like it's, you know, never ending because that's never going to end. Matthew chapter 4, verses 14, it talks about the rich young ruler. And, and I'm just going to paraphrase this. The master goes to the guy who had the free. And he goes, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. He was told that after he was given the, the talents. And the guy says, hey, you gave me five. And I made you five back. You get a 100% return on your investment. He goes, hey, because you've been faithful in that, I'll make you faithful in this. And then he says, he was faithful over a little, so God promoted him. And then he goes on to say, the, the one guy says to get one, he goes, what would you do with it? And he goes, I was afraid that I would lose it, and so I just dug a hole and buried it. I did nothing with what you gave me. I did nothing with it. He's like, that was the wrong thing to do. I'll just paraphrase it that way. He's like, that was, that was the wrong thing to do. He goes, matter of fact, that's just kind of lazy. And so he's like, no, just, just go. Do something with what God's given you, and you'll you'll benefit from that. And so we always want to do that. we got to be faithful and generous. See, if I'm believing for a promotion at work or a raise, 
but I can't get to work on time. It doesn't work, right? No, it doesn't, it doesn't work right. I'm believing for, for good grades, right, in school. I'm believing for good grades in school, but I don't ever open my books. I'm going to osmosisly get the knowledge in me as I'm scrolling on my phone through class. No, it doesn't work like that. Got to study, got to do it. I'm believing God for a good marriage to get better, but I won't change what irritates my wife. Oh, you don't like it when I do that? Then write that down and continue to do it. Oh, I changed that. I'm believing for a breakthrough in my debt, but I won't start charging credit cards. You know, it just doesn't go that way. Whenever we're faced with a difficult decision, always choose the generous option. Always choose the generous thing. If you're believing for one thing, then, then work with it. Go with it. Go do, through that. Ask somebody who has knowledge in the area. See, I could have, I could have pulled that pull string till it was frayed and broken. First thing that he did was, let's fix this pull string before you pull your arm off. I didn't realize that. I just, I didn't want to change that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, some of you guys will get that for reference to the song. Generosity produces, listen, this is a, this is a big word nowadays, contagious. <laughs> Generosity produces contagious abundance and blessings. Chew. Thank you. I have another one. No. Proverbs chapter 11 up here. On the screen, I believe. Right now, it says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. Some people might say, "Well, I'm going to be a blessing now. I'm going to do that because then I get blessed." Well, that's the wrong part. You have the attitude that I'm going to be a blessing just to be a blessing because other people need blessed. And that'll work. Listen, in another translation, it says this. Or keep that up there. Uh, Proverbs 11, 24, 25 says, this is the NIV. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes into poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. No, refreshes others. Refreshes others is just a kind word. Have a great day. No, you have a rotten one. No, no one's ever gonna. No one's gonna say that. So they might say, "Hey, have a good night." Someone would say, "Don't tell me what to do." The guy who always says that. It's not funny. Four o'clock. He's like, "You go home." I'm like, "Okay." So, but a kind, just a kind word, a kind action, holding the door for somebody, a stranger. Don't sneeze on them when they go by, just to have fun with them. But you know, just those types of things. If you refresh others, you will be refreshed. Now, one of my, uh, I don't want to say spiritual gifts, because it's not. One of my things that I love to do is I love to bring humor, and I like to make people laugh. Total strangers. And uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's awkward, but I just, you know, I just like to have them. I just, I want people to leave refreshed. I want them to, to smile, uh, you know, if, if um, we're getting on our one kid because they just won't go to bed um, and we have to get on that little one, uh, I'll try to make him giggle or laugh before I leave the room because I want I want laughter to, to be the last thing that they, you know, as they leave the room or things like that. And if I'm dealing with a cashier and I'm on the phone, I'll put the phone down and engage them and, and talk to them and, and you know, try, try and bring humor and make chuckles. And, the Bible says whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And so uh, Proverbs chapter 28, 27 up there, it says, Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses. Now, that scripture is kind of weird, but if you think about it, just living in America, we're in the top 1% of the wealthiest people in the world. Even if, like, you've got nothing in America, you still have more than half the people in Africa. Does that make sense? Like, so, yeah, we, we must be generous in all types of things, but, you know, at some point in time, maybe we just need to impact, like, they're doing in France and Peru and those types of things. 
because we don't want to ignore that. Or if there's people in our own backyard, like the, uh, the food pantry we, we take food to, we must make sure that's part of our giving as well. And now we'll close with Luke chapter 6, verses 38. It says, give your life away and you'll find life given back. But not get merely given back, given back with a bonus and a blessing. Who doesn't like bonuses at work? Right? Who doesn't like bonuses? Be given back with a bonus and a blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. Another way it says that, give, it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, will be poured into your lap. But the measure you use, it will also be measured to you. Imagine, and I forgot to bring them, a uh, thing of Lincoln Logs. When I was younger, Lincoln Logs, I, I dumped them all out. When I went to put them back in, I couldn't get them all back in, so I had to shake it. I had to shake it up and down, and it made room for more. God says when we do these things and we're a blessing to others, he'll make room for more in our lives. What would your marriage look like if you were unconditionally generous? The other day, my wife, I didn't do it. I didn't have ulterior motives, but Fridays are my day to cook. Well, because we had baseball practice, I asked her, did you want to eat before or after? And she goes, after. I was like, okay, well, could you do that? You want to get this ready to go? She goes, it's Friday, I'm not cooking. I was like, all right, I can have the grill started at 7.30. And when I got home, she goes, I regret telling you that because I'm hungry. Not just hungry, she was hungry. And so, uh, you know, but the other day I come home and I started a recipe and it has to be precise or I just don't know what to do. And, and then it was, the recipe was doing its thing. It was cooking. So I was like, oh, the dishwasher's full. I'll let her do that. No, I started to unload the dishwasher. And my wife, she goes, you know, that was nice. I said, that was the only time. You're welcome. We used to. No, I said, all right. But I wish I would have known that 20 some years ago. Well, she wishes I would have known that 20 some years ago. <laughs> but what would happen in your marriage if it looked like unconditional generosity? What could God do in you and through you if, if you just let generosity run everything? If, what can God do through your, your, your brothers and sisters if you didn't just get on each other's nerves and that kind of thing? What, what, would, what would you do? You said, you know what? I see a need. I'm going to meet it. That would be tough. That would be hard. Because I would immediately look at my bank account and go, I can't meet every need. Oh, we, 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 you know, we can see a need and, and try and meet it. That's, that's what God wants. It's not just financial. It's everything that we can be doing as givers. Time, effort, knowledge, those types of things. Because that's really, 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 really what God wants us to do. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for us having the strength and the knowledge and the willpower to be generous. It goes against the grain of our nature. It goes against the grain of everything. God, we thank you that that it um, can be done in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for moving mightily in our life. I thank you, Lord God, that is, as we're generous, it comes back to us. That as we're, we're generous with things, that, Lord God, you don't withhold generosity to us, that we'll never lack for anything, anything at all. God, we thank you that when you sent your son to the cross for us, because of that, that we don't lack anything spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially. God, I thank you for that. We're here today. We'll just take this time. This is our your moment with God. This is your moment to say, all right, God, I messed up. I need forgiveness of this. I, I've, I've done this. I need forgiveness of that. Or, or help me be more generous. It's your time to talk with God. The amazing thing about God is we could all talk to him at the same time, and he still processes it and still remembers what we said. There's like several trillion people on this earth, I think, maybe billion, I don't know, give or take a zero. He knows all of us by name. He knows how many hairs are on all of our heads. My number is two. God, we thank you for that. We thank
thank you for Jesus going to the cross. If there's anybody within the sound of my voice that has never or has recently or never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's simple. Just say, God, I ask you to forgive me. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Forgive me of what I've done wrong. I may not do it again. I'm going to be closer to you. See, God wants us to be generous with everything we've got because he was generous with everything he had. And he still is. God, we thank you for moving today. We thank you for us being generous. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name.